finally time to see how Sasha and her Mon Point Dino's 350Z rips with that great big sexy 4.2 liter VQ. Since you last saw this car at Sasha, it was on the dyno and it made a gigantic number. What was it, 5.30? Close to, yeah, right around there, 5.30. 5.30 like NA VQ horsepower. If you haven't seen that video, go and watch it. It's what we think is probably a world record. It's probably the most powerful VQ in the world, which is exciting to see in what is otherwise a really well-sorted race car. It's got a few bumps and scratches <laughs> on it. We won't focus on those for today, but you've done a bunch of work since the dyno session. Yeah, so if we look past the body, yes. pretty much the entire car has been rebuilt. Okay. So we've got Bosch ABS now, so oh, that's wow. all brand new with the pedal box that okay. Tilton uh, hooked us up with there. Nice. And then we've got all new exhaust and everything, titanium from Vibrant, it's like oh, wow, yeah. flat floor. We've got this, just this kind of temporary template of our flat floor. Okay. And once we've kind of got it working, we'll, we'll make it out of carbon fiber. Okay. Um, so the engine, we've got the new radiator in. We didn't finish the duct yet for the hood. Okay. So we just cut a big hole in the hood. Okay. Uh, that's good enough for now. Yeah. The old air boxes are just on, just all temporary okay. until we can build new air boxes that kind of wrap now to this new spot that the engine's sitting in. And gotcha. Like that. So you weren't actually able to tune with the air boxes on, so today is kind of a, a, an experiment of sorts to see how it runs with the air boxes. In place. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I have a rough idea of how much power it's making, and right. we'll see based on the fuel trims. If it's pulling a bunch of fuel out, then it's pretty good uh, evidence that the air boxes are really killing it and chunking it down. So is today a shakedown run, or is today a I want to beat my old lap time record? Or is it both? We're only here with three-year-old tires. Okay. Um, and you remember those tires when you drove the car. They're, they're a hard compound. They're not designed for little tracks. Right. So it, it's totally just a shakedown. You know, we've rebuilt the brakes. We've built the engine, um, the cooling system. Like, everything's new. The right. electronics, you know, the, the new ECU, the new dash. Yeah. So it's just a shakedown, and it's just uh, making sure all the systems are working. Okay. Day. But Sash is still a racer, and I know he wants to go fast. So what was your fastest lap time in this car prior to all these changes? 12.1. One, one minute, 12.1 seconds. Okay. Yeah. So well, if we can do like, uh, depending on how the tires come up, if we get the tire warmers to get them a little bit, you know, excited. Yeah. Then if we can do like a 111. It'd be amazing. Uh, then I'll be, I expect it should be able to do a 111 unless the tires just will not turn on at all. Yeah. I mean, it's coolish today. We're probably at 10 degrees Celsius right now. It should warm up maybe to one or to 17 or 18 this afternoon. Yeah. So maybe in the afternoon would probably be the, the best chance for a hot lap. But we'll... Yeah, like it's all about the tires. You know, they, these things, once, you know, racing tires, once they go hard and they turn, they, they die. Yeah. But maybe we'll get lucky and with the, the tire warmers, we can wake them back up. Okay. And uh, if they turn on even a bit, I think we can do go faster than all before. Right. Well, let's get these tires warmed up and then let's see what this Savage can do behind the wheel.
Sasha's back in from giving it its first real shakedown and there's some issues I guess you're saying you're seeing a lot of variation in oil pressure. Yeah, so remember on the dyno we were seeing the oil pressure kind of being very almost like pulsations. The sensor would read very low then very high and, and so that's happening. Okay. And as the oil is getting hotter though, obviously the pressure is going down. So mm -hmm. you have to try and investigate that again. Okay. Um, then obviously we did this temporary flat floor. Yeah. Um, so there's some exhaust you can smell coming into the cabin. That's a new sensation uh, with the flat floor, so you, yeah. you think there's a bit of an exhaust leak then? or I think for sure, like at the slips, we had a little bit leaking, so maybe that's coming through. I mean, with the floor, there's nowhere for the exhaust to go right. down. It can't just go into the airstream, right? Mm -hmm. So it's if there's any leaking, it's going to come up through, I think. Right. Um, but otherwise, like everything's working. The, the, you know, the gear shift's working, trash control's working, the ABS is working. Um, so we're really so you had a little brake lockup coming through the chicane there. Yes. Yeah, did so, you feel that or did so? There's an alarm that comes on the dash that says ABS fault happened. Okay. So we'll have to see whether that's the ABS itself because the curbs are so violent there. Yeah. That the G sensor thinks something's wrong. Right. Or whether it's uh, we did program something in so that if I'm if I have a lot of G force and I'm braking really hard to turn mm -hmm. off the ABS. Mm -hmm. um, just because sometimes when you're spinning out, if you have ABS, it'll just keep moving forward and try and hook you in the wall. Right. Whereas I'd like to have the ability to just lock up all four tires and just kind of keep my trajectory and right. not hit the wall. Right. So maybe I've set that a little bit too. Okay, it's gonna take some time to dial it in, obviously. Yeah, but I'm, we're pretty happy like with, considering it's like everything's new. Yeah. Um, everything but, seems to be working really well. Yeah, it looks like it's driving well, although you're struggling a bit for traction. You can really hear the traction control cutting yeah. as you come on the front straight here. It's really like blah, 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 Yeah, blah. You'll, you'll see in the video, there's lights on the side of the Motec C187 dash. Yeah. So we've got those programmed to show how much slip is happening. Yeah. And pretty much any time in second gear, even third gear, those blue lights are on. Right. And so you'll hear, you know, from the outside, you'll hear pop, pop, pop. Well, that's the ECU mm -hmm. cutting ignition to, to reduce power. So is this a case of you not knowing what throttle position to be in because it has so much more torque in before? Yeah. Like maybe you've gone back no, to your I'm old muscle memory driver. and you're, you're kind of... I've have, always relied on traction control. Though. You've just go, I've you just mad it? Just, oh, I didn't know that. Not mad it, but I've always been like 10 or 20% more than I should be okay. and let the traction control deal with it. Right. Whereas if you don't have traction control, you kind of have to be 10 or like percent lower. Right. So you're always leaving something on the table. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about traction control is you kind of just you know, get to the apex and just put a bunch of throttle in just and, send it and let these two deal nice. with it. Nice. Cheating bastard, eh? <laughs> yeah. And um, now with ABS, it's the same thing. Just smash the brake pedal and let the ABS deal with it. No so muscle memory involved. Just brutality yeah, with the pedals. pretty much is. I love it. Yeah. Well, it sounds amazing. I don't, know, I don't know what you can hear inside the car, but from trackside, it sounds so crisp and yeah. just like so That's pure. Cool. It's well, I can't really wait good. to watch the video and really see what good. it sounds like. You're going to like it. As long as the mic isn't getting blown up, right. you're going to like it. Right. So.
Well, Sasha, we've got good news and we've got bad news. The good news is he went fast, but the bad news is it came at a price, a carbon fiber price. This happened in turn one. I guess uh, she was a little loose and bottomed out and just tore herself off the car. So, Kevin, still, you got some work to do here, but uh, the car looked incredibly fast. It sounded amazing. You got down to a low 111? It was a 111.3 with that ripped off. Wow. And I had very little front downforce when that was gone. Yeah. Couldn't slow the car down, couldn't turn it in. So I think the way it sat today, there was a 110 in it. Okay. And I mean, these tires were dead. So I mean, there's no point in keyboard racing, but I, I really believe that Fresh a tires, 109 is possible. I would think so too. Having driven on some worn out Pirellis in my day, they're not great when they're a year or two old, are they? Yeah, and it's like the hard compound one. So yeah. maybe if we were at most for it and we were really putting some load in. Yeah. But here, you know, you need a soft tire to get, yeah. to get going. but. I mean, let's forget about all that, like the uh, the car, we've changed everything, right? ABS, yeah. the electronics, ECU, the dash, the engine, like, yeah. so all the stuff that counts worked perfectly today. Yeah. I was a bit rusty, The we, you know, we rushed to do that flat floor, so we didn't have the splitter fully tied up and yeah. a couple other things, yes. so, anyway. Mistakes were made, everyone, but there's nothing wrong with the 111.3, I don't think that's a mistake, and this car is properly fast, it sounds amazing. So the oil pressure situation was looking Good enough, so that so you basically what runs. happened with the oil pressure is we're sampling that sensor very quickly. Yeah. And sometimes we'll get a pulse that's really high, yeah. high pressure, and sometimes we'll get a pulse that's really low pressure. So we just averaged it out. Okay. And uh, you know, who's to say, we don't know, understand the way that the oil works well enough to know whether those, you know, microsecond pulses of low oil pressure are, I feel that, it, you know, the engine is averaging that pressure out yeah. and it's not, you know, we can, we can work with the average. Range. We can read the average and, and assume that that's the oil pressure. Okay. All right, I guess that's a wrap, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. And before we go, Sasha, is there anyone you want to thank? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, Jim Wolf with this engine, the thing is a masterpiece. It is. It's a beautiful work of art. Yeah. And uh, it's just working perfectly so far. So that's, you know, can't thank those guys enough. And then Fiber, you know, helped us out with all of this uh, material to make the titanium exhaust and all the plumbing we needed. So, so that's awesome. And, you know, that, that exhaust kind of speaks for itself. It so does. I'm really glad that we, you know, Mike from GD Custom was able to come and get yeah. that done for us at the last minute because that was really cool. Yeah. And then Motec, I mean, the, the new electronics just work perfectly and that dash is awesome. So it really is. You guys yeah. will see it in the, in the, I'm sure you've seen it in the footage already, but uh, the color display with all of those lights and warnings. I mean, I, I knew when something was wrong. There yeah. were lots of warning lights There's today. No shortage of information. Letting in you know there. what was wrong and it was. <laughs> Never missed one. So. Well, if you guys need Motec stuff, you know where to go. He knows a thing or two about it. I think it's MotecCanada.ca or .com? Where do they find you? Oh, .com. So yeah, head on over there if you're looking for Motec goodies and uh, head on over to speedacademy.shop. If you want a hat or a hoodie like Pete's wearing that I'm not wearing today. Or maybe some carbon fiber uh, Some carbon fiber car parts. From C3 composites. We've got it all, everybody. <laughs> some broken carbon fiber parts. <laughs> In any case, stay tuned everyone for more on point Dino 350Z action. We will follow along as he further develops this car and uh, starts working on that hybrid system. That's gonna be a whole other level. I don't, know how, I don't know how he's gonna do it, but I wanna find out. <laughs>